good morning today we will study about quantum mechanics okay especially the postulates of quantum mechanics what are the important postulates of quantum mechanics there are six postulates there are six postulates there are six postulates okay we will first see uh, what are macroscopic particles what are microscopic particles what are macroscopic particles for example earth planet ball etc or macroscopic particles what are microscopic particles uh, subatomic particles like the electron proton neutron they are called subatomic particles or called microscopic particles and classical mechanics uh, otherwise called newtonian mechanics is used to explain the uh, motion of explain the motion of the macroscopic particle the macroscopic particle uh, is um, explained by using the classical mechanics whereas classical mechanics fails to explain the motion of microscopic particles therefore quantum mechanics was born quantum mechanics or wave mechanics was born um, classical mechanics was based on is based on newtonian second newton second law of motion f equal to m a newton second law of motion whereas quantum mechanics is based on h star psi equal to e psi this equation is called schrodinger wave equation this equation was derived by schrodinger to describe the behavior of quantum mechanical system to describe the behavior of uh, subatomic particles for example the behavior of electron in uh, quantum mechanical system he was awarded nobel prize he was awarded nobel prize for deriving this h star psi equal to e psi this equation is called schrodinger wave equation we will see further and in classical mechanics the exact path the exact trajectory of the particle can be uh, followed can be uh, studied can be followed whereas in quantum mechanics in only uh, in quantum mechanics uh, we cannot follow the exact path of the electron it gives only the uh, it only get the probabilities of finding the electron or particles in the uh, atom or in in the physical state okay now let us see what are the important postulates of uh, quantum mechanics the formulations of quantum mechanics are based on these six postulates remember the uh, the quantum mechanics are based on the postulates of the quantum mechanics okay now let us uh, study the postulates six postulates that are they are very very important for example the physical state of a system for example a quantum mechanical system is there how to study the state of a system the physical state of a system at any time point t is described by the wave function psi okay for example uh, what is psi psi is a wave function is used to describe this physical state of a system in other words okay for example psi is a function of x and t uh, function psi is a function of the wave function is a function of uh, position and time position of a particle and time for one dimension for particle moving in one dimension for example for a particle moving in three dimension x y and z then the wave function um, is used to describe the motion of the electron or microscopic particle therefore we need x x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate and also a particular time what is where is where is it present okay now let us see the second postulate what are the characteristics of wave function the second postulate is nothing but what are the characteristics of the wave function it is very very common question as what are the important character what is the significance of the wave function what is the significance of wave function the wave function at its first derivative d psi by dx and d square psi by dx square or a continuous function remember see this is a sine wave cos wave for example here this is a wave function wave wave behavior okay so the the wave function the wave function or continuous function continuous and finite it has a single value finite definite value and single value for all values of x for example one value or particular value this is the psi okay so it is a single value you cannot have for x values you cannot have for example and it is not it is not continuous this will be like this not continuous this is not continuous 
function using the loss and minus function. This is a continuous function. And for single value of x, there will be two or three values of sign. That is not allowed. For example, you are uh, at, at the particular time point, only one, one position is, uh, one is allowed. You, you will not be in two, uh, two places at a particular time. Okay, so that is the physical meaning of uh, the wave function. Okay, the wave function and its first derivative and the second derivatives are continuous function, finite function, and single value function for all values of x. And further, the wave function is also normalized. The wave function is normalized. This is a mathematical condition. This is a mathematical condition. You roll over. Uh, integral minus x2 the electron the particle can be minus x minus x2 plus x okay it can be anywhere that is in minus x2 plus x psi star psi dx equal to 1 this is the mathematical normalization condition this condition is called normalization condition but psi is the psi star is the complex conjugate of psi what is uh, psi star psi star is the complex conjugate of psi for example psi equal to a plus ib then psi star equal to a minus i b, where i is the complex number, where i is the complex number, therefore complex conjugate. Okay, now uh, for real value function, for real value wave function, psi star equal to psi, for real value uh, wave function. Okay, now you see uh, this is the, what is the physical significance of normalization? They will ask you, what is the physical significance of normalization condition? The total probability of finding the electron between minus x to x all over the space or all over the space or minus x to plus x equal to 1. The, the maximum probability value is equal to 1 over the maximum. This is the maximum probability, the total probability. The overall uh, finding of electron uh, between minus x to plus x equal to 1. Okay. Okay, now let us see the third oscillator. What are operators? What are operators? Third oscillator is very, very important. What are operators? For every physically observable property, for every physically observable property, that corresponds to an operator in quantum mechanics. Okay, for example, what are physically observable property? What are physically observable property? Energy, energy of the electron. It is physically observable. Position, position, where is the position? It is physically observable quantity that corresponds to an operator x cap. Okay, that corresponds to for energy, physically for this is a physically observable property that corresponds to an operator x cap. This is a physically position, it's a physically observable quantity that corresponds to an operator x cap. For example, A, A cap, and linear momentum operator, then the physical uh, the operator. The, this is the quantum classical mechanical expression and this is the uh, corresponding quantum mechanical. So the quantum mechanical operators can be derived from the classical expressions. You know already the classical expressions. It is uh, already derived. So from the classical expressions, the quantum mechanical operators are derived. You will see in the next cl class what are operators, how the uh, operator expressions are derived. Okay. Next one is eigenvalue equation. This is very very important. What is eigenvalue equation? This is nothing but uh, a cap psi equal to a psi. This is uh, called this ex this mathematical expression is called the eigenvalue equation. What is the eigenvalue equation? When an operator a cap, when an operator a cap operates on a wave function, it gives the observ observable values. It gives the allowed values gives the allowed values called eigenvalues and the wave function psi okay where a cap is the operator for the op, uh, for operator for the physically observable quantity a for example h cap h cap is the operator uh, energy operator hamiltonian total hamiltonian operator for the physically observable quantity energy okay the allowed values the value is the eigenvalues are the allowed values obtained by this relation, by obtained by the eigenvalue equation. Okay, now this is very very important. This is nothing but the starting the wave equation. Okay, so how the observed values are obtained, how the allowed values are obtained, how the eigenvalues are obtained by using the eigenvalue equation. Okay, so you know the operator, you know the wave function, you can find out the 
observe the values, energy values, E1, E2, for hydrogen atom, we can calculate, we can uh, theoretically determine the E1, E2 energy levels, energy levels, energy values. Okay, now the fifth postulate is the average value, what is expectation value, very, very important. The average value of an observable property A and its operator A cap is obtained by using the relation. Okay, the expectation value is obtained as expectation value of an operator uh, of a physically observable quantity A is obtained by using the relation psi star A cap psi dx. Psi star complex con psi is the complex conjugate of psi and dx divided by psi star psi dx. See this expression, this expression is nothing but normalization condition. You see, this is nothing but your normalization condition that is equal to 1. Therefore, the denominator is equal to 1. The expectation value is calculated by using this expression. You know psi, psi uh, the wave function, you know psi the a cap, the operator, you will see, you will derive and you can calculate the average value of any physically observable uh, property. For example, average x, uh, x cap, average value of x, average value of x, x cap, then x cap, you put x cap, okay, you will write it two times and then for what is the average value uh, for the position, for the position of the quantum mechanical system, then you put x, here x cap and then what is the average energy value, what is the average energy value for a quantum mechanical system, uh, then you put E here and uh, X cap here, ok. Now let us see Hermitian operator, what is Hermitian operator, ok. A physically observable quantity A can be represented by a Hermitian, represented by Hermitian. What is Hermitian operator? A, an operator which obeys this mathematical expression, remember an operator is said to be Hermitian if it obeys this relation. Okay. This expression is also called a turnover rule. This is often asked what is called a turnover rule. Okay. So that it is nothing but a Hermitian operator. It is nothing but a Hermitian operator which uh, obeys the turnover rule. Okay. Now what is a turnover rule? Now you see here you can simply write this expression psi psi i star. Okay. A cap same expression, psi j dx. Now I will turn over to, I am putting psi j here first, integral psi j first and then psi i here and I am putting both a cap psi star, okay, dx, that's all. So this expression, this mathematical expression is called turn over rule. Any operator, any operator which obeys this expression, then the operators are called Hermitian operators where psi i and psi j represent the wave function of the physical states of the system. Physical states of the system. So these are very very uh, important. What are the important characteristics of the wave functions? Um, for example, what is wave function? What are operators? What are operators? What is eigenvalue equation? And what, how the expectation value is obtained? What is the expression to calculate the average value of the physically observable property? And what are Hermitian operators? Uh, what are the turnover rules? They will ask the such questions. So these are the uh, basics for the understanding of quantum mechanics. We will apply the these postulates for particle in one dimensional box, particle in two dimensional box, rigid rotator problem and I have given certain videos, please watch them. Uh, thank you for watching, there will be several problems uh, based on these postulates. Okay, thank you for watching. We will continue in the next class with the operators.